It's a bear. Good morning. Hey, what's up? Or I should say good afternoon. Sorry about the lateness of this. Just wanted to kind of roll through the day and see where prices settled at. It was a little choppy this morning. Take a look at the uh, live Deerfield beach cam right here. Lots of bait fish out there. And uh, look at the clarity of the water. Absolutely beautiful. Well, let's move along real quickly to what we're here to talk about. And uh, I'm going to do a little quote today. This is by James Rickard. It says, a gold standard is the ideal monetary system for those who create wealth through ingenuity, entrepreneurship, and hard work. Gold standards are disfavored by those who do not create wealth, but instead extract wealth from others through inflation, inside information, and market manipulation. Uh, very, very good quote by James Rickard, and James Rickard's one of the big gold and silver bulls out there, mostly a gold bull, I believe. And a uh, very astute quote by him. Well, let's take a look at the prices of gold and silver today and see where we're at right now. I'm going to do a quick refresh here. Uh, and uh, down just a tad, but the, I think the coin got it right. Uh, it's a bear on gold and silver so far today. And uh, let's take a look at the ranges here. 915 the low, 948 the high. Man, we were popping on that 1950 almost there, but kind of sitting um, yeah, about, again, $26 less is from what it says right here. Uh, silver, $24.93 low, a $25. Uh, 45 is the high and currently sitting at 25.15. It did dip below the 25 range, but it looks like it's, it's sure holding on to it right now. We'll look at the 24 hour charts here very shortly. Uh, platinum up 15 bucks and uh, palladium up $87. So palladium moved, uh, busted through that 2600 mark pretty handily this week. But no surprise to me, considering that a lot of the palladium comes out of Russia, as I said last Friday. Or, uh, yeah, last Friday I said, you know, expect uh, palladium prices to be up with sanctions and everything like that. And here we are. Uh, however, one thing I have noticed is that palladium has such a wide spread on it. So be careful when you're buying and selling palladium. A lot of the dealers I know out there are using Kitco. If you want to know which spot is a proper spot, even uh, this one may not be correct. A lot of the dealers are using Kitco for some reason. They're using the Kitco bid to base their buy prices on and the Kitco ask to base their sell prices on. And I, there's a, quite a spread there as well. And last I looked, uh, I think they were, uh, I think the wholesale spreads, now this is without me making any money whatsoever, but I think in the wholesale level, I could get probably around spot minus 50 to $75 uh, less than the Kitco uh, uh, prices on Palladium. And I believe about probably uh, uh, 50 to 75, or maybe $75 or more uh, if I have to go buy Palladium. So the premium is not too bad. Actually, well, actually it's a, about a $150 premium for me between the buy and sell. And I will usually tack around uh, another 75 bucks a unit for myself there. So it is pretty widespread, uh, or you know, it is a widespread. Well, uh, let's take a look at the 24-hour charts and see where this action is taking place. And there's our green line right there, which indicates this is today. The red line would be last night. As you can see, it drifted up over last night. Um, and then we've kind of drifted downward a little bit today. Uh, there is word that the, uh, and, and let me get into something here with the price of gold, more than the price of silver. But as I said, where gold goes, silver will follow uh, eventually at some point. Uh, and what we've seen go going on with gold is, uh, oh, we've seen a minor black swan event with uh, Russia moving into Ukraine last week, uh, more or less. And uh, that did cause the price of gold, mostly gold, and as I said, silver will follow. Silver's working on its own fundamentals right now. Uh, I think gold is really the Ukraine play at the moment, but as I said, uh, silver would follow gold if gold went higher, and it did, 1850 plus at some point. Uh, however, I, f I can feel monkey hammering coming up. I think at some point it, when uh, the Ukraine government, uh, Zelensky, uh, capitulates uh, or, or makes agreements, whatever they need to get done to end that violence over there, uh, that we're going to see the price of gold. Well, I think the price of gold is maybe already factoring that in somewhat, the ceasefire. Uh, and I think that's what you're seeing here with gold. You're seeing that ceasefire. But uh, uh, we're unsure right now. Could the battle heat up again and could that kind of jump up uh, uh, quite a bit more? Gold? Yeah, sure it can. I think it's a good possibility that that might happen. However, if a ceasefire does go into effect, I can see gold prices dropping and that would be the opportune time for the big commercial banks to go in there and monkey hammer the price of gold down and it'll take the price of silver down. They'll do silver as well, but it'll take the price of silver down with it. And why is that? because that's when they like to go and monkey hammer the markets during big news events and this is a huge news event it's a mini it's a black swan event type 
uh, although we've got a lot of black, black swans out there. This is a kind of a black swan event. So if a ceasefire is announced and it looks like terms may be announced, uh, you will see, and I'm pretty positive, you'll see gold and silver get monkey hammered down pretty significantly, but I don't think it'll stay there very long. I think it'll be a short term, what we've seen slingshot. Because let me remind you of one thing here. Prior to this Ukraine incident, uh, gold was breaking its 200-day average without even a war in the picture, okay? Silver was trying to break that $24 mark, and it was doing it pretty well, even though it's break, recently broke the $25 mark. And we have breached the 200-day uh, uh, moving average in silver. Uh, so, you know, this was to be expected with this type of war event. But again, when do they like to monkey hammer these markets? Well, the big, uh, the big manipulators like in the COMEX, TRIMEX markets like to manipulate these markets and the GLOBEX markets as well. They like to do it on newsworthy events. And as I said, uh, the biggest newsworthy event of the year would be Russia rolling into Ukraine. So if there is a uh, ceasefire and some kind of terms agreed to, and that's publicly known. Expect to see price of the metal, uh, gold and silver, get uh, hammered down. At least that's my opinion. Now, could that not happen? Sure, why not? Why not? This is just my educated guess on what I'm kind of watching here and what I've seen in the past. And would I like to see it not happen? Absolutely. Uh, but as I said, over and over and over, they take the opportunity, news events like that, they take the opportunity to go in and manipulate those markets down. Just like what I've always said, whenever whenever the Fed is going to come out and start talking, whenever the Fed starts coming out jawboning, that's when they monkey hammer it's either right before, not well, usually during or after. Uh, that the, the uh, uh, Fed speaks. Now, if the Feds telegraph what they're going to say already, they'll do it the day before, but they always monkey hammer uh, gold and silver markets. And I, I sure other markets as well, but this is the market we're familiar with. Uh, when the Fed speaks, they also do it when they start to release uh, GDP figures. They do it when they release the uh, uh, job figures. Uh, they always monkey hammer them around news events. And, and the news itself, uh, I, well, this Ukraine event definitely did move gold upward, okay, and silver upward for sure. It followed, uh, well, mo gold mostly, but uh, silver took the took the lead of gold, or not took the lead, but uh, followed the lead of gold. Uh, but uh, the, the Ukraine definitely a black swan event that would uh, cause the price of gold to go up substantially. However, we were there already. So when the ceasefire, and we all hope for a ceasefire, and we all hope everything ends peaceful over there, I uh, do expect the price of gold and silver to come down a little bit, but again, temporarily, and it's only because it was being monkey hammered, not because people are laying off their gold and silver, because everything is okay now, all right? All right. <laughs> uh, I have replaced, I digress with all right. How's that? That's our new drinking game, all right. So every time I say all right, take a shot. Uh, let's, all right, <laughs> let's take a look at the uh, silver prices here. Spot silver bid. Uh, kind of sideways here. Last night's market was closed up around that 2540. You know, we saw a spike near that 2450 mark yesterday and uh, kind of drifting sideways and uh, slowly down a little bit too on the news. But silver showing some real nice strength, still hanging on to that $25 level. But as soon as I say that and I'm done doing this video, you'll probably see it drift back down below 25. Uh, tough to say again, just my, my estimation. And in fact, let's just do a quick refresh and see where we're at at the moment. And uh, 25.13, yeah, I think we'll see some weakness after New York, maybe. Tough to say, though. So, well, there we go. Some side na side, side nays, sideways movement in silver there. And uh, as I said, expect it. I don't know what they'll do in the silver markets because silver just shown some amazing strength. But, you know, if BOFA indeed has that uh, $800, million, uh, 800 million ounce short position and, uh, uh, and a lot of those other big commercial shorts are suffering at... $25 silver. You can expect that they're going to they're going to load both barrels and try to knock it down. But again, it'll be around it'll be around the time that uh, Ukraine there's a ceasefire or some kind of news event that's worthy of them doing that so it doesn't look like they're manipulating it. Okay? Does that make sense to you? I hope it does. Um, I see the picture pretty clearly. Well, let's take a look at the stock markets up dramatically today and I think a lot of people this is the Powell um, you know, what is the Powell put? This is the lack of the Powell put. This is people believing that Powell is going to. And also, I think that there's a, a lot of manipulation going on by the uh, plunge protection team, which is a combination of the Federal Reserve, the government, Treasury Department, that whole thing. I think they're in there out there supporting Dow Jones, SP, and NASDAQ, and other markets as well with their endless printing presses. Uh, but uh, the mar reason the markets are up right now, again, is because I think people are expecting Powell to delay raising it by 25 basis points. 
Um, so we'll see what happens. The, pro the Fed isn't really in a shit place right now, but the whole world is as well. And who put us there? It certainly wasn't the uh, Critter 19 that put us in this shit place. It certainly isn't the Russians that put us in this shit place. You know what it is? It's lack of good leadership globally. Uh, from Europe to the United States to uh, Canada to you name it, all over the world, lack of good leadership, all right? Uh, and I'm not going to blame any particular parties because they're all to blame for this with their printing presses and their uh, being out of touch with the working class. Uh, but I, I uh, ooh, here's a digress for you. Here's an I digress. I digress. <laughs> all right, let's move into uh, uh, Bitcoin. I explained to you the other day why I thought that there was uh, big movements in Bitcoins. We saw it go from a low of, what was it, 34, 33,000, even less. Oh, that was a while ago. Uh, recently, I'm sorry, here. Uh, 36,000 and we saw it shoot up to about 44 where it's sitting right today. A lot of choppy action, a lot of volatility. If you know how to make money on that, God bless you. Uh, good for you. Uh, but no less, uh, I was pretty certain that what we saw, the big inflows, uh, were when the Russian sanctions started hitting in. And when Putin says he was going to announce that, uh, you know, over $10,000 transactions couldn't be done with outside foreign currencies or something like that, we saw some big inflows into Bitcoin for sure. And again, uh, as a ZH article pointed out yesterday, that was mostly all Russian inflows. As soon as that stops, um, and you know, uh, uh, Russia does not want inflows into Bitcoin. You know, they don't want outflows going outside into foreign currencies right now. That's what they're trying to prevent. So if they can prevent uh, uh, more money flowing into Bitcoin, they will, in my opinion. But right now, they're probably turning a blind eye to it. But that big movement, that big. Uh, uh, several thousand dollar move up from the 36,000 range to here we here we are is definitely Russian money and probably Ukraine money as well. Let's see how long it lasts there. Uh, and it seems to have flattened out at this level too. So we know they pretty much put in everything there. Uh, here's what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for the new update on the misery index. And the misery index, of course, is an index that's been around for a long time. I'm just showing the inflation end of it, but they have not updated it yet. Look, and close your eye. There's a Biden administration. Look at this. Woo, boy, take a look at that inflation rate. We haven't seen anything like that since the Carter days. Um, let's move up top, and uh, I'm going to just go to close your eyes if you get car sick. And here we go. Employment rate. Uh, let's do index by year, index by president. Let's just do the index in general. Uh, close that. And uh, where is my index? All right. Index by month. How miserable do you feel? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I don't see, where are all the presidents on here? There's more presidents than that. Give me one second. Index by president. Uh, there you go. And, uh, boy, I'm not even seeing it. Hang on one second. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to take you to all these. It looks like I am not, where is it? Index by Congress, index by president, index by year. It should be, uh, there we go. Sorry about that. I was looking for that graph. Uh, and that's my president, too. Go figure. Uh, there's the index. The red represents unemployment. The blue or the darker line represents the inflation index. Now, if you take a look here, you can see uh, Ford and Carter. Shortly after Nixon took us off the gold standard, we really went to shit in a big way. Uh, and again, don't forget, we did go after the gold standard after this point, and uh, we had the, uh, uh, the oil embargoes. We had big problems with oil and all kinds of things going on. But take a look at this. Again, this, is the, this blue mark represents inflation. Uh, the red mark represents uh, unemployment. So, uh, hang on a second. Is that is that correct there? Yep, yeah, I'm pretty sure that is correct. All right. And as we move down here to the Biden administration, you can see that. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. The blue represents and pff, dummy me. The blue represents unemployment, and the red represents inflation uh, on this particular chart. The last one it didn't. And as you can see, uh, unemployment rates have decreased here. Uh, remember, 2020 was the year of the uh, critter, uh, and the reason they're, they're, they're old excuse why the economy is going to hell, their old excuse why, uh, um, <laughs> why we have inflation, their old excuse uh, about a lot of things was the critter 19, and they've completely run out of that excuse. In fact, if you saw the uh, uh, address last night, uh, now it's going to the, the new excuse for the uh, inflation, the new excuse for the world going into the hell in the handbasket is going to be uh, Russia now. So <laughs> that's going to be the new excuse of this administration and administrations all over the globe in our in our failed. You know, oh gosh, I'm, I'm not going to go there. All right. 
What I am going to go is something I do better than anyone else out here in YouTube land, and yes, I'm bragging. I am a, uh, I've been a dealer since 1977, uh, started working for the family business before that and during that period and after that. Uh, went out on my own, got this place in 1995, uh, been in this location since 1995, and uh, I know precious metals real well. I'm also a rare coin and a paper money dealer and other things, but one thing I do know real well, better than charts, better than uh, my commentary on politics, economics, which ties in the gold and silver, I know product, and I know what the best deals are. And, uh, um, and I'm telling you folks this that are new watching my videos, for you folks that know my videos, uh, you can fast forward through this, but the best deal for my folks that know my videos is still bars right now. Bars are spot plus $73 or less, depending on the quantities that you want to buy them in gold. Uh, there are no better deals than that. Once you start getting into uh, maples and all, that, all those things, I think they're 87 or $90 over spot. Eagles are spot plus 100 to 113 depending on the quantity that you're buying. Uh, not worth the premium, folks. Bars are still the best deal out there, any of the good name bars. And uh, just like Krugerrands, Eagles, and stuff like that on uh, maple leaves, a lot of people say, well, you, you know, it's hard to counterfeit. And people can, you know, it's better to have coins because they're hard. It's not better to have coins because they're a bit harder to counterfeit. Coins are just as easy to counterfeit. In fact, if you go to Alibaba, you can find gold eagles on there for three dollars. All right. So, uh, and 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 if the dealer you're working with, a lot of people think they're going to trade this stuff for food. Oh, I'm going to trade it. For, you know, maybe with my neighbor. That's never going to happen, folks. Even during uh, the uh, in hyperinflationary period of Germany, Germans still went to sell their gold, and they just got a wheelbarrow full of marks. Okay. They were still using the uh, uh, hyperinflated currency to buy goods. They just had a good hedge by owning gold. They weren't trading with their neighbors for the most part. Same with silver. So anybody that tells you you're going to be trading your gold and silver in a barter type system, folks, most people wouldn't know a real uh, 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 silver coin or a silver bar from a bad one. So don't think that's even a possibility, okay? Uh, let's get, and definitely stay away from graded United States gold coins. There's some dealers out there or dealers or some talking heads as well that push certified U.S. gold coins. Uh, and they push it not because it's a great deal. They push it because there's a higher profit volume, a profit margin in a form. And uh, 20, graded U.S. $10 gold pieces, $20 gold pieces, fives, and that kind of thing. Common dates I'm talking about in, uh, in grades of MS62, 63, 64, even 65. Uh, they're not good investments, folks. Stick with gold. You're, you're paying a super high collector value there and mostly a grade value for a very common coin. Uh, if you just wanted to own one, to have one, that's cool. But uh, don't spend your money on that. And if anyone wants to have a debate with me on that, any YouTube talking heads out there want to debate that, I'd be happy to. Also, the uh, confiscation. What I'm talking about here, I'll tell you what I'm talking about too. Graded, graded U.S. gold coins. The other reason, the other excuse given out there, well, they can't be confiscated, so you want to buy $20 gold pieces, and I'm circling right there. You want to buy numismatic items like this uh, because they can't be confiscated. And uh, the truth of the matter, folks, is that's bullshit. Uh, anyone that tells you that you need to buy uh, sovereign coins, U.S. gold coins, or silver uh, uh, U.S. coins, because if you don't, they could get confiscated. They're full of shit. And again, love to have a debate with them on YouTube. Up. <laughs> Any day, any day. Take them on any day. So avoid that stuff unless you just want to have a cool piece yourself. And, uh, you know, something to look at and talk about. Hey, and don't get me wrong. I love rare coins. I love U.S. gold coins. But when they're promoted for the wrong reasons, you know, I still love them. I just don't like the people that promote them for the wrong reasons. Or I'm going to call them out, and I have. And I still do, and I will continue to. Again, uh, happy to debate any beyond that. Uh, best prices out there for silver are definitely kilo bars. I have them in stock right now for spot plus $2.75 while they last. Uh, that's for small quantities, larger quantities. I can get that price down a little bit more. But again, while they last. Uh, other than that, I have a good, really good supply on 1 ounce, 10 ounce, and 100 ounce bars. Uh, ones are probably closer to spot plus 350. Tens and hundreds are closer to that spot plus $3 level. But again, for a quarter cheaper, I do have a good deal on uh, kilo silver bars right now. As far as sovereign coins like US 90%, Silver Eagles, Maple these folks are love the products, just overpriced. And if you know last year I was pushing 90% when it was like spot plus $2 or something like that, spot plus 250 a year, year and a half ago. Uh, when you could trade in your Silver Eagles for spot plus five and put some extra money in your pocket. But with the price that we're 90 is right now, constitutional silver, overpriced. 
Uh, and why is that? I guess there's a big demand for it and little supply. That's why you're seeing the higher premiums. Meanwhile, I believe there's still thousand ounce bars out there that are, be converted, that are being converted very quickly into generic ones, tens, hundreds, and kilos, uh, and those seem to be the best deals of all. Uh, and uh, again, happy to debate that with anybody out there in YouTube land because one of the things I do better than most everybody out there is I know my products, wholesale and retail. Well, let's just take a look at ZH and see what's going on in the news. Not too much good stuff here, but of course I'll make my commentary and my commentary on economics and politics for you folks that think it doesn't tie in. It does tie in. All this stuff ties into the price of gold and silver. The further our, our, uh, our, our empire declines, uh, the further our society declines, uh, the, the higher the price of gold and silver goes in economics and politics does play a big part of that. Uh, ceasefire, again, I'm thinking this is why we're seeing a little weaker gold and silver prices. And if they do announce an official ceasefire, I, I can see uh, the manipulation getting really heavy real quickly. But I don't think it'll last too long. Again, the price of gold and silver has continued to climb and uh, uh, before this event even started. But uh, you know what? Uh, I don't. I wouldn't want to uh, have gold and silver go up on the back of people's misery, that's for sure. But, you know, it seems to anyway, one person's, one group's misery or another. Uh, this is just a joke right here. Texas, really, between those two? And isn't it the, this the guy that wanted to take away everyone's ARs? <laughs> uh, and he's going against that guy. In Texas, you know, these people just really don't have any grasp on reality, in my opinion. I can see in another state, but in Texas? Oh, what is he thinking? Not, not apparently. So, and that's what seems to be the problem with most of our officials worldwide and our politicians, not thinking. Uh, let's see here. This doesn't work out well for anybody. That's a guess, uh, and uh, that's not surprising. But trust me, they are better prepared for this than we think they are. They were prepared for this type of action. They were prepared for uh, sanctions and all this kind of stuff. So anyone that thinks otherwise is an idiot, okay? And boy, we do have a lot of idiots out there, don't we? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, oh, I guess that's interesting. Uh, Must lampoons, okay. Oh, failing to, okay. I, the, egomaniac. I like what he says, and I like that he busts the balls of governments and officials, but he is an egomaniac. Uh, but the world does go around because of egomaniacs. I mean, we need them too, I guess. And uh, we need morons as well, uh, and lying morons. And uh, uh, again, just my opinion here. Apple, uh, this was a bad do deal by Apple and Google. You know why? Just like how the United States militarized the dollar, we, we weaponized the dollar against countries, you know, by saying, listen, if you don't do as we say what we want, you will get no more dollars. Well, that's going to bite them in the ass because Russia, why do you think they did this? They created their own system. They don't need the dollar like they once did. If you think they do, you are, you are delusional, okay? Uh, I mean, they, could, they, can, they don't absolutely need the dollar anymore. Russia's de-dollarized, China, China's de-dollarized. You know, the one thing too, even in the height of the Cold War, they loved the dollar. China did, Russia did, everyone loved the dollar. But when, they, when the United States made the mistake of weaponizing it, it screwed us big time. They create their own systems eventually and they tell us to stick our dollars up our ass. And that's what's going to happen to Google. <laughs> that's what's going to happen to Google and Apple. Uh, for doing this, in my opinion. It's going to get stuffed up their asses at some point. Well, uh, it's like uh, 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 media, too, uh, social media. Once they start kicking people, censoring people off, you know, like myself with Facebook. And you know what? I'll never touch another Facebook meta product again, more or less. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to be involved with it. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. And I got to admit, I got a couple things rolling out there for some, you know, reasons for, uh, uh, but I'm going to cut them off pretty soon as well. And uh, this is what we were talking about. Powell kills March 50 bullet point, hey, but leaves door open for later. Um, and uh, did he actually kill it? That's probably why we got the uh, equities markets moving up and gold and silver kind of moving down a little bit, possibly. I don't know. I don't see any good reasons for gold and silver to move down other than just sheer manipulation. But, you know, we know, we know that story. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, lies, lies, and lies, and more lies, and uh, uh, maybe this is what it's really all about, this uh, thing for Europe, but I don't think so. I think there's a lot of other things involved. You know, France wants to sell weapons to Ukraine. They want to get rid of the Nord Stream. U.S. wants to sell oil to U.K. Uh, everybody wants to make the Russians look bad. <laughs> well, because, again, th these, these, these administrators, these politicians, these officials and gov governments from the United States to the, to the EU, to Canada, to all over the world, all these people 
had really screwed up badly. They screwed their economies up before the Critter 19 came along. They screwed up the whole Critter 19 by closing everything down. That was, uh, but they, you know, again, their excuses were going to be Critter 19 first. But the Critter 19 excuse is falling on its ass now. So what's the next excuse that the EU, United States, and the rest of the, the uh, crony corporate world is going to use? They're going to use the excuse of the Russians. It's the Russians' fault the economy collapsed. It's the Russians' fault that the uh, um, uh, 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 inflation. It's uh, Come on, folks. I think a lot of us are way too smart for that, and we're starting to realize the bullshit that governments, officials, and corporate media feed us on a daily basis. Uh, and if you have someone in your family or a friend that doesn't realize it, you need to you need to de-brainwash them. <laughs> Show them stuff, all right? All right, let's get out of here because we could talk about this stuff all day, and I'll talk about uh, yesterday's video. Uh, first, let me make some comments on comments. You know me. I got the greatest comment commenters out there, too, a lot of smart folks out there. Uh, if you want to learn something besides from listening to my videos, which I hope I'm teaching you something, uh, or read comments and comment as well. You'll learn from by asking questions. And be civil. Uh, sorry to hear that, Danielle. And uh, it's, 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 silver's been cheap for a long time, just way too cheap. And, uh, and it, people's patience do wear thin on it. But again, it, it provi what I heard, it, this provides you a great opportunity to buy silver at a cheap price, real silver. Uh, two days is the biggest gain. Oh, Wellco Services, nice to hear that. Uh, they, they don't follow the crowd. I'm glad you don't either. Uh, independent thinkers, I do like. No one really knows the price of it, but I can tell you now is, is not the right time to buy. Kind of interesting uh, uh, comment there. Maybe you're thinking the same thing I am, that it may get, fall backwards here uh, once the ceasefire is announced. Thanks for commenting, Mr. Tassavalis. I think Ahilius Tassavalis. Did I say that right? Uh, let me know in comments. Victor, hey, what's up? Yeah, we saw it already. I think we saw 2550 at least. And my local dealer only orders silver rounds. The only time he sells gold is if he gets someone that trades in it. Why would that? He's been in the business for years. You, if he doesn't have gold in Deline, uh, uh, uh device, you know what? Ask him if he'll order it for you, if you can prepay, and he'll order you an ounce of gold or 10 ounces of gold for a reasonable price. There's no money out of his pocket. You know, and it can get delivered in a couple days. And if you're just buying a couple ounces of gold, tell them I'll pay cash. Can you, can you, you know, or, you know, or if he wants to take a deposit, fine. But we, we, we have our orders paid in full. If he wants to pay in full, have him order it for you. That might be a good idea if you trust him. And he's been there for 10 years. You're probably good. I think you meant 1952, Victor. What's up? And uh, no, it's not hard for me to get silver and gold at all. I have constant uh, supply of it all the time. So far, so good. But remember, I've been in this business a long time. I'm not the biggest guy out there. I'm not the best guy out there. But I've got a lot of time uh, under my belt for buying and selling wholesale and retail gold and silver bars and coins. Uh, so I do know my stuff. Uh, yeah, this is true. Thank you, Go Time Warrior 76. And um, platinum is a tail because of this whole thing. Um, that's, that's a possibility as well, Michael. And um, uh, welcome services us again. What would you pay for American Silver Eagles? I think I'm getting spot plus 450 or something like that for Silver Eagles, maybe a little bit more. Uh, though the ass side is like spot plus 750, so there's a huge spread. I'm not sure about cuckoo barrels uh, on silver, and onzes are just crazy money. They got to be spot plus $10 or more. Uh, again, widespread. If you went to sell them, you'd probably get spot plus five or four. And then if you, you know, if you want tried to retail them out, there's probably spot plus ten. Pandas, I'm not sure about either. Sorry about that. I would have to look these up. I bet you silver pandas are probably in the forty-five dollar range. But again, big premiums. I'm not even paying attention to Welco Services to the uh, sovereign coins because the prices are just insane. Both the buy and the sell price, wholesale and retail, in my opinion. Uh, good question, though. Uh, maybe I'll try to find some info for you here on the uh, other products I didn't mention. And uh, <laughs> the coin drop makes you want to go to st a coin shop, right? That's a nice big silver coin, though, isn't it? That's it. Uh, it's a bull. <laughs> and uh, too big to fail and too big to jail. Where that BS written down? Well, it's it's written down. Uh, trust me, Chuff Tucks. The unfortunate problem is, is that these big crony corporations that are in bed with government uh, again, we don't live in a capital, free market capitalist system anywhere. We live in a crony corporate system where if you got big money and you got access to Washington, D.C. politicians and officials, you're in bed with them and you're going to make money. And if you don't, you're screwed. That's what This is not a free market economy we've been in. So if you ever have a, uh, a socialist or someone that's a Marxist or something uh, rail into you about the capitalist system we have, remind them we don't. We don't. We have something that borders on fascism now, which and corporate cronyism. Okay, 
and uh, and their party is just as much involved, all right, than the red party. Neither party I respect, to be honest with you. Uh, I've always said I thought we need a few more in there. Boy, I, I want to get sideways here. We've got to be careful. Um, uh, please don't say it can't, it has been. That's probably true there as well. And uh, thanks for uh, commenting there, uh, Rich5310. And please, please, why always a bad speaking about the digital coin every time? Objective facts, mean you are right, they are right. Depends on what time and place you choose. Um, you know, I don't know, man. The problem with uh, App B, the problem with me is just, uh, it's, it's just, what is it? What is it? It's just digital ones and zeros. It's not any better than, well, it can be limited. However, let me not confuse Bitcoin and, and what is confused as money or what people are trying to push this as with the technology. I do like the technology. So a couple guys have mentioned out there, hey, hey, you know, it's okay to, you know, diss Bitcoin, but don't diss the technology. And I am not. I'm not dissing technology. But the last thing I want is an, a digital fiat out there, you know, just to replace another fiat. You know, if there's anything that we've learned from the Russians right now, the United States basically shut the Russia out of the dollar. So the poor average working Joe in Russia right now can't access his Apple or his Google Pay, can't access MasterCard or Visa, can't access any U.S. funds. Why? Because we froze them out. And don't you ever think that they won't freeze you out one day as well. Don't you ever think that. This is the beauty of cash, even though it's fiat in your hand. This is the beauty of gold because you got it in your hand. But uh, they can't lock you out with cash in your hand and gold in your hand. Very difficult to do. Uh, they can do it with that plastic card or that uh, uh, or your uh, uh, username and uh, password. They can definitely cut you out of that, folks. Don't you ever forget that. Uh, come back down 20 hours. Ooh, you might have got that, heebie-jeebies. Uh, 25 without the apples. Thank you very much, Tommy. Uh, Joseph, I appreciate that. Uh, we'll find out more about what's going on with my dad tomorrow. And I will, uh, uh, well, I hope everything works out, too, as well. You know, nobody gets out of this movie alive, unfortunately. And, uh, anyways, uh, Heart of Texas, uh, the Great Reset needs Charles Schwab. You own nothing and be happy. That is Klaus Schwab that said that. Fucking moron. Uh, rich moron, too. And just because you're rich don't make you smart. Trust me on that. I met a lot of dumbass rich people. <laughs> I still do to this day. Uh, I feel very grateful to be alive. Uh, to witness. Uh, yep, Silver Loving Lou, thank you. And thank you for wishing my dad well. And Benj. Benjamin on Bald and Bankrupt, what a great series that is on YouTube, Bald and Bankrupt. For those of you that haven't seen it, you want to learn more about the eastern regions out there, want to learn more about Russians, Ukraines, what the real people are like, watch Bald and Bankrupt. Uh, thanks, Silver Loving Lou. And, uh, well, oh, there you are. NATO creates this issue. They took away security on Russia's border. Absolutely, absolutely true. No doubt about that. We have turned into a bunch of hypocrites. If they put missiles on our Canadian or uh, Mexican border, we would be livid. We'd probably blow their countries up. Uh, yes, yeah, premium's good on sovereigns. I don't know what they are currently. I don't have my sheet. Hang on a second. I can tell you right now. Hang on. I did print out my little sheet. Uh, sovereigns you should be able to pick up for melt new new the cheaper ones are the new Elizabeth old kings and old queens are more money but if you can pick up uh, the new Elizabeth sovereigns you should be able to pay you know m maybe melt plus 30 to 40 dollars over the melt price uh, which is not too bad not too bad for a fractional piece compared to the others uh, thanks Moody good point uh, 30 bucks yep yeah, Patrick and uh, until recently going sort of 16 to 1 ratio this is true uh, and keep stacking whatever you feel comfortable with. Twelve, uh, uh, twelve, us, okay, twelve, us. Um, uh, nuclear, nuclear weapons. <laughs> Thank you, Celeste. And uh, you're welcome in my shop anytime. If you guys, as you know, I'm a local brick and mortar dealer. I advertise to be at Max JM SD Bullion, and your local dealer should too. But if you don't live in my immediate South Florida and you can't visit my store 10 to 4 Mondays through Fridays, unfortunately, I can't sell to you. Best thing I can do is you know, take a trip, come by, and I'll love to see you. And uh, uh, again, find a local dealer if you don't live in South Florida. I don't mind being a tiny more, and I still like them. <laughs> can't argue with that either. And uh, the only thing that will stop paper dumps are they back right and they will take 5 to 15. I don't think so. I think that the paper dumps are eventually going to fold in on themselves. I think we're starting to see that right now. This black swan event uh, and others are going to cause that. Uh, oh, boy, that's a hell of a prediction. Thanks, Attila. I appreciate that. And uh, Mark, I for going bot still down. Uh, not sure about that, sir. Uh, ATH for going the tie bot still down. Hmm, interesting. 
U.S. leads cartel, I blame us, Eisenhower warned us. Uh, if anybody's never seen Eisenhower's speech against the uh, uh, military industrial complex, I highly recommend you watch it, especially you young folks here. He nailed it back then, and this is exactly where we are today. Uh, $30 silver this month, Howard says, thank you. Going to Florida soon, uh, you're welcome by any time. Silverback El Toro, a great deal, thank you, G. Appreciate that. Kilo bars are a good deal, spot plus 275, and I do have a limited supplies. Uh, a financial analyst, I finally said that perhaps gold and silver has decoupled. Uh, they have somewhat a little bit, but I think, again, gold will always follow silver, juicy boy, that's for sure. Uh, it may be delayed, but it will always follow gold. Uh, well, it has so far, historically. And uh, uh, can't argue with that, Russell, and I appreciate all the comments out here. I really, really do. Um, my theme for the year is think for yourself and question authority, even question your own narrative. Is it your own? Did you develop it yourself? Or were you fed it by the uh, corporate news, your parents, your schools, or whatever it is? You know, look into yourself sometimes first before you start looking at other people's uh, narratives. Sometimes you'll, uh, you'll uh, have an eye-opening experience, an epiphany. Well, anyway, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale at sea. Call me anytime at 954-493-8811 between the hours of 10 and 4. I think I'm going to call it. That's it. Hey, let's see what happens, and uh, let's hope for a peace everywhere, man. Peace and money. <laughs> have yourself a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.